In this video, I want to introduce one of the ways of calculating uh, the standard heat of formation of a reaction, and that is through standard enthalpy, enthalpies of formation or heats of formation. So those two are synonymous terms. So what is a, a standard enthalpy or a standard heat of formation? It is the enthalpy change for a reaction where you make a molecule out of the elements in their standard state. So for example, here in ethane, uh, ethane contains carbon and hydrogen, and so the standard formation enthalpy of ethane is the enthalpy change for this reaction, where the reactants are is carbon in the natural state, which is graphite, and hydrogen in the natural state, which is H2 gas. Then you can use these heats of formation to calculate enthalpy changes. So the enthalpy change for this reaction here, the enthalpy change for this reaction can be gotten by the difference in heats of formation or in standard enthalpies of formation. So standard enthalpy of formation of the products minus standard enthalpy of formation of the reactants. And of course if one of your components is an element in its standard state, right, that enthalpy of formation will be zero because you have this, you have H2 gas both as the reactants and products. Uh, and, and you can see that these two are the same through a little bit of algebra. Right? So the en standard enthalpy change for this reaction is the enthalpy, standard enthalpy of the products minus the reactants. If you instead use the standard heats of formation, right, then the changes, the, the enthalpies of the product of the reactants, sorry, right, will be the same on the reactant and the product side. Right? So they will cancel out. So the enthalpy of formation of ethane right, will have these terms here, but these terms will also appear in the standard enthalpies of formation of ethene right, and hydrogen. So these will disappear. You're only left with the enthalpy of formation of the product molecules, and that is the same as the change you calculate from the heats of formation. Okay, so how do you get these heats of formation? Well, the good thing about these heats of formation is that they've been measured once and are now available on, for example, the net. So if you want to know the heat of formation of ethane, you can simply go to Google, type in heat of formation of ethane, Uh, you get, let's look at this one, data table sounds promising, and sure enough, here you have the standard heat of formation of ethane. Uh, but let's say that you're dealing with some kind of unusual molecule uh, that you can't find, for which you can't find the heat of formation on the, on the web. Well, you can estimate it by using a, a tool called a molecular calculator or mole calc. So you won't get the exact heat of formation, but you'll get a reasonable estimate. So if you want to know the heat of formation of ethane, we have to first build ethane, calculate, and click thermodynamics. Right? And what we find here then is an estimate of the heat of formation of ethane. And this just summarizes the two things. You will see that the values here are different. They can be quite different because this, after all, is, is only an estimate, but um, it's better than nothing. Okay, so what I'd like you to do now is to calculate the experimental delta H for this using experimental heat of formation. From Google, and also to estimate 
delta H uh, by calculating the heat deformation using mole calc. So the right answer is, is one of these four. So click pause, go to work, and when you think you have the right answer, then press play. Ready? Okay, so the right answer is D. Uh, if here is the experimental value for the heat deformation of ethane, we'll, we just look that up, and the same table contains uh, the corresponding value for ethene. And of course, you don't need to look the heat deformation, the heat deformation of H2 up because that's zero by definition. Uh, and if you take this number and subtract this number, you get this number. Uh, conversely, if you calculate the heat deformation of ethane, like I showed you, you get this value. If you calculate it of ethene, you get this value. And again, there's no reason to compute it for H2. You set that to zero. Right? And so you can see the difference here is about, you have an error of about 10 kilojoules per mole, but it's uh, you know, less than, than 10%.